वेलकम टू स्टोरी बोर्ड आई एम शुभानी घरत एफएमसीजी मेजर आईटीसीज ब्रांड सैवलॉन हैज अ न्यू एंबेसडर बट द न्यू फेस ऑफ द ब्रांड इज एक्चुअली योर हैंड यस यू हर्ड दैट राइट सैवलॉन्स न्यू हैंड एंबेसडर इज नन अदर देन सचिन तेंदुलकर इन अ कन्वर्सेशन विद स्टोरी बोर्ड 18स दिलशाद रानी समीर सतपति हु इज आईटीसीज पर्सनल केयर डिवीजन सीईओ टेल्स अस मोर अबाउट द न्यू हैंड एंबेसडर एंड द कैंपेन एंड आईटीसीज फोकस एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स इन हायर ऑर्डर कॉज मार्केटिंग Hello and welcome to Story Boy 18 Samir I'm delighted to have you on the show Hey Mia Dilsha good to see you again So let's just uh, kick off with talking about the latest iteration addition to this long running campaign that you have with Savlon uh, can we talk a little bit about you know what was the genesis of this latest addition and what was the rationale uh, behind bringing Sachin Tendulkar on board See Uh, communicable diseases and preventable diseases can easily be prevented if you wash your hands uh, unfortunately not everybody does that and not on opportunity not at all times uh, the covid had brought a uh, new conscience to people in terms of how disease could be spread from hands but uh, i think some of them have linked it uh, to only to covid and not to everything else so we felt there was a need to refresh and go back uh, and to consumers and talk to them about uh, hand hygiene all over again uh, from a fresh slate and we said we needed something a uh, little dramatic to 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 bring it back uh, uh, literally back into their consciousness i think that was the starting point and uh, and uh, having sachin on board i mean he's got stature he's got credibility he uh, cuts through everywhere uh, everybody gets it and uh, he personally i think what we really like was he personally was committed to this cause and uh, had already been doing work in this area how has the journey been for you to see this grow say from brief to where it is now and in terms of in terms of the highlights but in terms of measurable impact what are the key highlights there for you i think for us i think it's uh, as a company we have always been uh, triple line uh, triple bottom line focused so we are always looking for you know uh, things which uh, move to uh, and uh, society in the right manner and over the years uh, this was uh, you know uh, india is a country where hygiene can be a challenge in some parts of the country uh, the hygiene habits need to be inculcated and we uh, we had zeroed on to children a uh, long time back uh, we felt that that is a place where if we can teach them uh, uh, with the combination with the help of the school and with the help of their parents Uh, these are high, these are these are lifelong all lifelong habits and this would make a positive change to society so over the years i think we have we have now, now we have we are we are there on in 25000 uh, odd schools and uh, we've been to there and around 8 million uh, children so so it's 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 a large number but looking at india's population i think there's still a lot to be done the campaigns that are driven by higher order causes uh, perhaps how you measure their success is also different how has that evolved over time uh, and specifically in terms of a business impact you know we are of course seeing how um, we can link purpose to profits so has has your view of how you see the success of such campaigns change in terms of the business impact as well can we talk a little bit about that no i think it comes from i think there's an old saying uh, that uh, for a believer no proof is necessary and for a non believer no proof is enough right and uh, what we have always believed is that if you do well for society at large if you do well for for people it comes back uh, it comes back because consumers resonate with it and that's been something which we have done very consistent and you have to be consistent obviously it's, it's it's and consumers uh, take this very positively so you the the linkage is there but it is not as mathematical as uh, some people may like it to be but uh, uh, i think uh, it's like it's like reputation right uh, if you have a good reputation uh, your company has a good reputation your brand has a good reputation the probability is very high 
that more people would want to engage with you than less people. Final question to you. Uh, what's your outlook for the year going forward? You know, we're seeing sort of, you know, global economic pressures. There's uh, inflation worries. Um, you know, I mean, even something like post-COVID trauma, for instance, uh, and sentiment seems to be a little muted. Uh, what is your outlook going forward? I think there are, I think there are many Indians out there. Uh, but what's common in all the Indians is value-seeking behavior. So that has not gone away. It has always been there and it's only become stronger. So consumers, even whether you're rich or you're poor, if you are rich, you might go to e-commerce and buy a super-sized pack which gives you efficiency. If you are maybe not that affording, you might go to the local Kirana shop and buy the 10 rupee product because you still get access to the category. So you're seeing both the behaviors, but the, uh, but the fact still is driven by value. So uh, in, in, in good times and not so good times, Indian consumers uh, do look for value. And uh, as marketers, as, as brand owners, I think we are very conscious and we have to keep maintaining that. So that's one part of it. We have all learned and we have all been taught is to be flexible, keep the first principles close, keep uh, your focus on execution. And there will be, uh, you know, there will be some roadblocks, there will be some hiccups. I think you try to maneuver around that and get on with it. So, you know, uh, yes, keep, keep the horizon uh, one eye on it. But don't get too put up because it might change. It is time for a short break. On the other side, we have Ashwin Murthy, Chief Marketing Officer, India Godrej Consumer Products Limited, joining us. Welcome back. You're watching Storyboard. Godrej Consumer Products Limited recently launched the world's lowest cost liquid mosquito repellent device and a no gas mosquito kill spray. The company said it is targeting over 100 million households that use the smoke-intensive local and often illegal insecticide dipped incense sticks instead of liquid vaporizers or aerosols. I caught up with Ashwin Murthy, Chief Marketing Officer India, Godrej Consumer Products Limited, on what is the strategy to take these innovations to these households? How is GCPL re-evaluating its marketing strategy while managing macroeconomic challenges and how are they shaping their campaigns while holding the core value of the brands from ages. Ashwin, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Thanks for having me here, Shabani. Ashwin, so this year has begun with two exciting launches from GCPL. One is the low-cost mosquito repellent machine and the other one is uh, a mosquito spray without gas. Yep. Can you tell us uh, more about these two launches and how do you intend to uh, I believe the focus is on low-income households with these products. So how do you intend to reach to these households over the next uh, few weeks, months and this yeah, year? Thanks, thanks, Shivani. I think, you know, when we looked at the mosquito insecticides category from the consumer's lens, mm -hmm. two of the largest categories in mosquito repellents are liquid vaporizer and aerosol sprays. Mm -hmm. But what we realized is that these two solutions were primarily accessible to urban India. Uh, or, or generally upper middle middle income to middle income consumers in general. And when we went down and met lower income consumers, we realized there were about 100 million odd consumers who didn't use either of these two formats, but had the same issues. They wanted a good night's sleep, there was mosquito free, they have high infestation, and they wanted instant kill to clear the rooms. And then we realized what they were using an alternative, they were, they were burning uh, things like coils or incense sticks. And many of the incense sticks are actually illegal. They are agarbatis dipped in insecticides that aren't really regulated. So both from a perspective of consumer safety and of access, we had to innovate and bring both these categories uh, at a price point that, be that they'll be able to afford. And then we realized we looked at both of these products that we have. So in, in liquid vaporizer, the product called Good Night Gold Flash. Um, which is the top selling liquid vaporizer across India, we realized that this machine had a dual mode. And the reason for the dual mode is, you know, when, you, when urban homes infestation tends not to be high throughout the night. There are periods when there are high levels of mosquitoes and then we shut the, we tend to shut the windows, put on the fan and sleep. So you don't need a standard high level of insecticide released through the night. We realized that consumers in lower income households did not really need that. They tend to sleep with the windows open. Right. So there is a kind of a regular mosquito infestation that goes through the night. So the, the reason why you can give a dual mode 
is because there's a chip inside, it's an electrical circuit. We removed that. We also removed the plastic. So there are certain cosmetic uh, features of the urban flash, which is it covers the, you know, when the refill is put in, it covers that part. We removed it because you said, look, this is, may not be as necessary to, the, to consumers who want to access the benefit. So we reduced the plastic, we removed the chip, we simplified the device, and we were able to halve the price at which we could give it to consumers. Uh, so thereby really kind of expanding the access that, uh, that they got. Similarly, with the aerosol spray, globally aerosols are one of the biggest formats for mosquito repellent. Uh, and then we realized that the reason for aerosol sprays to have uh, pressurized cylinders and LPG propelled uh, sprays is because they cover large rooms. So when you want to spray, you have a large room, you want to spray the insecticide and cover the entire room, you need something to propel it. But these consumers who had relatively smaller rooms did not need that area of coverage. So we learned from the deodorants business, which has done quite a big value disruption on adopting water-based spray. And then we realized that if you remove the pressurized cylinder and you remove the LPG propellant, you could actually give consumers really high quality, safe insecticide at a spread that works for them. And you halved the price. So we removed the price. We moved it down from the mid hundreds to 50 rupees for a month protection. And now, uh, you know, the launch has happened, but uh, comes the part where, you know, it has to reach as many households that you yeah. intend to take it to. So what are the challenges when it comes to uh, creating awareness or spreading awareness of a product like this? Because all said and done, like even in rural households or, you know, many semi-urban areas or low-income households, as you mentioned yourself, they use... Um, products like incense sticks to uh, do away with the mosquitoes? There are many stores which do not keep these formats. They don't keep the good night gold flash. They don't keep the hit aerosol sprays mm. uh, because they were just too high and they didn't have the demand. So what these packs at 50 rupees each give us the ability to is to access these stores in the first place. So these are stores that keep incense sticks, uh, that keep coils, mm. but they don't keep these products. Uh, and now we can reach those. So the first is to leverage our physical distribution that we have because we're fairly large soaps business of scale uh, to be able to reach uh, these outlets so consumers have physical access to these products. The second is on building mental availability. So both these price points will be advertised and we're also going to be investing in, in rural marketing and rural reach, uh, which we were not at the same level in the past. To get consumers who were not purchasers of good night or hit there are quite a large number of them, 100 million is our estimation, to be aware that now these products exist and are accessible at a price that uh, they will find convenient. How significant is the insecticide repellent business for GCPL? It's a large business for us. It's a large category. It's about 6,500 crores. Hmm. Um, it's a large category in India. Um, and uh, we have a very large share of that category. We have more than half that category. So, uh, you know, since you're focusing on market development, do uh, these supply chain issues and, you know, in general uh, or, uh, you know, global economic factors, uh, the whole, uh, you know, disruption when it comes to tech space, is it impacting uh, your marketing plans? Are you reevaluating your marketing strategies in certain way, considering that also for a product like this, you are... Uh, you know, thinking of growing the market. So you need to have sizable amount of budgets in hand when it comes to marketing. No, certainly. I mean, uh, we continue to invest uh, heavily in advertising and media. Hmm. And uh, we remain committed to building the access because these products will not grow hmm. unless we are able to improve our, uh, our our ability to reach those consumers well. So in those sense, the investments beyond uh, marketing, particularly in insecticides, will continue to be made. Hmm. As technology improves and certain media becomes more accessible than others in terms of both its scale and its pricing. Hmm. So many parts of rural, we've discovered that rural digital is larger than TV in certain case in driving reach. Hmm. So we kind of follow hmm. scale and we follow pricing yeah. uh, with our marketing investment. So as technology develops and as markets evolve, yeah. we will keep you know, staying in pace with uh, with those opportunities there. Product like this, which is, uh, you know, which is taking uh, an insecticide repellent to uh, smaller income households or, uh, you know, an ad by Synthol that reflects the aspirations of women of today. Uh, very different from the kind of advertising that we have seen from GCPL in the past. So, 
are you moving towards you know reaching out to more bharat more india per se i think it comes down to insight so for example in synthol there's there's a history of fine advertising you know mm -hmm. and uh, brands evolve with consumers so synthol is a great case of a brand which for 70 years it's in fact it's uh, it's 70th year this this year uh, has been able to keep pace with how consumers have changed so started off with a lot of male colonic type advertising hmm. uh, with some of it is quite iconic uh, with vinod khanna and then shahrukh khan after hmm. that and then in this in the south what we realized is uh, as uh, you know consumers tend to share soaps it's not just hmm. a male soap in the house or a or a female soap in the house consumers tend to share soaps in the house is what are those insights in cleansing hmm. uh, and uh, with women in general that we can unlock to to make this brand even stronger more loved hmm. uh, more memorable hmm. and similarly in the case of insecticides as well i mean a recent advertising on good night uh, hmm. which is on sleep is actually how the brand was for many many years in the hmm. past you know this brand i mean it's in the name good night hmm. it was built on a good night sleep hmm. so i think it's more about just keeping in pace with what is the fundamental memory structure of these brands hmm. in synthol's case it's confidence in the past it was vinod vinod khanna on a horse hmm. uh, today it's about a woman who changes society hmm. by boldly becoming a collector hmm. and taking on a job which uh, you know many women weren't doing in the past that's hmm. the reality today hmm. so it's about holding the core values of the brand hmm. but adopting them to really exciting advertising ideas and insights hmm. that makes them loved and uh, yeah but you get the today. the shift that i am hinting at right like we are used to seeing uh, like a synthol or a good night in a particular manner good night was showcased in like a nicely done polished uh, home and now you are taking it to lower income households so uh, there is a shift there's a clear shift that is seen from an like from an observer's point of view from an outsider's perspective yeah i mean the expansion of the segment and and hmm. the to lower income households is indeed intentional hmm. and the insights that ring true to those households so price and the use of these products in a certain way is an insight there hmm. but what it won't change is the fundamental promise the brand makes and what sure. we're very clear about is these are consumers who are aware of good night and hit they hmm. heard of it before hmm. so the promise that good night offers which is a good night sleep and that hit offer which is an instant mosquito kill those promises will not be diluted hmm. sure thank you so much thanks for sharing these insights with us ashwin thanks shivani it's great talking to you welcome back you're watching storyboard how do you make marketing commercial vehicles exciting and transformational how do you bring a b2c approach to b2b marketing and disrupt the category codes telling us about the key points in tata motor strategy to overhaul and transform how commercial vehicles are marketed in india we have shubhranshu singh vice president marketing domestic and ib tata motors in a conversation with delshad irani singh sheds light on how the auto major is driving change digital transformation and creativity in the category hello and welcome to story bar 18 shubhranshu i'm delighted to have you on the show thank you delshad great to be here thanks for having me I'm going to kick off by asking you straight up essentially um what are the key points in your strategy in terms of marketing commercial vehicles our strategy is to strengthen the mother brand and make sure each of the respective power brands within the portfolio contribute back to our brand equity and also to make sure that there are commonalities which are apparent to consumers uh whether it be in the area of quality cutting edge innovation um you know servicing the requirements of consumers uh accessibility these are things we want very strongly tied to our brand proposition and of course we are uh, our endeavor is to increase both the mental and the physical availability so in the last year and a half we have made very concerted efforts to reach our consumers digitally try and get a more vibrant social community uh, going and also to increasingly um, digitalize our business both in terms of uh, the accessibility as well as the richness of data and 
and the envelope of services that we can bring purely digitally. Can you share with us perhaps an example of a marketing initiative that truly exemplifies um, you know, the strategies that you're putting in action and also the direction in which you think um, marketing and marketing initiatives should go in for you in the future? Sure. So in the, in the last year, in fact, as recently as September of last calendar year, we did two mega launches. One was uh, across the portfolio for trucks. We had as many as 14 launches on the day. Um, and then subsequently at the end of the month, we did a launch in Hyderabad for our pickups range. Firstly, a lot of the pre-launch uh, understanding was developed through consumer insight building, meeting real consumers, also rejectors of our brand, also intenders and and those who adore other brands, so that we are able to give our, you know, our campaign many more legs. Uh, secondly, we did a broadcast. So we did a hybrid launch. It was a physical launch, but we also did broadcast and we publicized that broadcast. So we get many different stakeholders into the mix. It's not only about the fleet owners and the vehicle buyers, but also financiers, our own dealers, our vendor partners, and so on and so forth. And then critically, we have experimented throughout this year with influencers, national influencers, micro and nano influencers, um, carrying our messages in, you know, in local languages and trying to do that with the context of that specific city, that particular district, that given taluka. Now, what that helps to build is relational familiarity. So if I'm talking about uh, carriage of uh, fisheries products and I'm talking to shrimp farmers in coastal Andhra Pradesh uh, if I'm talking to them for, you know in, in, in their tongue if I'm talking to them in Telugu if the influencer who's talking to them has been there done that and if I'm able to give enough testimonials for people like them then it just builds a richness of texture so it gets picked up and digested that much easier uh, Tell me about sort of the switch that had to happen what are the perhaps a few challenges to making that switch um, at Tata Motors and especially when it comes to commercial vehicles, when you switch to a more of um, a B2C approach to um, how you sort of uh, market your uh, brands and vehicles in the commercial segment. Uh, my submission is that there is not a vast difference between the way in which a brand ought to be built for business to business marketing versus a business to consumer marketing. You see the, the thinking behind B2B you know, stereotypical thinking around it is that these are rational consumers, they are experts, they have been there, done that. So uh, if you're buying industrial chemicals or machinery or components and so on, uh, the brand has a subsidiary role to play. But if you go back to the basics of what a brand stands for, right, to have, to create a memory structure, to be viably differentiated, to stand for a, for a promise, uh, to be a hallmark and a, and, a, and a sign of quality. All of these things are, in fact, more applicable in B2B than perhaps even in B2C. Secondly, uh, the way in which the brand you know, plays out in a business-to-business -business environment has many more stakeholders, whether it is regulatory agencies, uh, you know, finance partners, service partners, manufacturing partners, and so on. So we are addressing the brand as a, as a bearer of many more inputs than just a consumer packaged kind of a, a goods environment. Last but not the least, you will see this duality. You know, if you talk of some of the most powerful brands in the world, whether it's a Microsoft or an Intel or an IBM or a SAP, uh, you know, all of the, or Dow or 3M or DuPont, all of these are powerfully B2C, but also in terms of revenues and profitability substantial B2B. And in many parts of our portfolio, we have all three models. So for example, the small commercial vehicles business, which is a very large, it's the largest volume business in our portfolio. There, the choices are very B2C for the most part. And the, the largest number of vehicles on the road are owned by first time users. So they are driver entrepreneurs. If you go up the chain, when we're talking to key accounts, they are humongous corporations in their own rights. So, so that follows a B2B and a more CRM oriented modality. Well, thank you so much for your time. It was great chatting with you. Thank you, Dilshad.
And now it's time for this week's notice board. Geo Cinema kicked off its Tata IPL campaign titled Digital India Ka Digital Tata IPL, starring cricketers MS Dhoni and Surya Kumar Yadav. The core idea of the campaign was to excite viewers about catching the tournament for free on Geo Cinema and showcases some of the numerous features such as 4K streaming, 12 languages, 17 unique feeds, multicam presentation, interactivity through stats pack and play along feature that fans will be able to access only via digital let's take a look With that, it's a wrap on Storyboard this week. You can catch all of our content on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Thanks for watching. We will be back same time next week. See you soon.